Y'all, I'm so disgusted. Me and my sister, as you saw in the part one review, we're doing a review for Love and Hip Hop. And I uploaded it. And it was like 15 minutes and like 35 seconds. Why I waited for this bullshit to upload. So excited for y'all to see my sister. Because she's like one of my favorite people. And I really think that she is talented. I love her views. And I really am trying to get her to go on YouTube. Because I really feel like people would like really like her. Anyway. I do my video. And... It uh, it won't upload because it said the shit is too long. 15 minutes and 35 fucking seconds. So when I tell y'all I didn't want to continue this fucking review, I didn't want to continue this review because I've been up half the night waiting on this shit to upload. Like I said, I was excited for y'all to meet my sister. I mean, I love her to pieces. Anyway, so what y'all got was a video that I could just trim and just upload so y'all can kind of get a feel for who she was and how our dynamic is for the review. So anyway, I decided I'm going to be positive and not let it get me down. So we going to say, welcome to Buzzworthy TV, y'all. I'm your girl, Lady T. And what is it? Jumpstart January. See, I'm trying to be positive. <laughs> and we're talking... Love and hip hop, y'all. And we gonna call this review part two. Cause me and my sister did start it off, so I'm just gonna pick up where we left off. We were talking about Yandy and Mendici. They have, you know, Yandy has surprised him with the fact that she's pregnant. And I kinda like that they're expecting another baby. I understand his concern because he does have all these charges pending and everything. But, you know, like I said, I just love their dynamic and I just love them together. So, you ain't gonna hear nothing, po nothing but positivity from me on that. Like I said, I get where he's coming from. But the way she's been holding him down, I think they could really make it work. I don't know. Just call that the, like, romantic in me. I don't know. Anyway... So, Diamond talks to her mother about Cisco. And her mama liked Wait Reed's the fuck out of her. Well, actually, like what my sister said, she didn't like Wait Reed her. She fucking read her. She was like, so basically, you guys aren't together. You came all the way out here. And he's cheating. So, what are you doing here? And I'm watching this and like, yeah, what the fuck are you doing there, Diamond? That's what I've been asking since the first freaking episode. What the heck are you doing here? So anyway, she's like, well, I don't want nothing to do with him. I'm just going to focus on my career and trying to get my career off the ground. And she's like, well, what about your daughter? And she's like, well, when I get settled, I'm going to send for her. But other than that, I'm going to see her, you know, two times a month. And I'm like... You are just a fucked up individual and I can't deal. The fact that you just be so nonchalant about your daughter and her well-being just really baffles me. Anyway, Sia talks to Rhonda. You know, Rhonda's the one that's been helping them and they're with their business, you know, their fashion line, her. And she meets with Rhonda. Rhonda's is basically saying that Erica's been keeping all the money, that they're line has been making like close to thirty thousand dollars a month and she's been keeping the majority of the profits so sin is like well damn bitch you ain't loyal when it comes to these niggas out in the street because you want to be all in their fucking face and then you ain't even loyal with me about the money so i just can't trust you so sin is pissed off and she just basically done with erica she Anyway, then we have Tyra and the kids. They fucking really went to Barbados, y'all. I can't believe this shit. So they in Barbados having a good time. And Peter, dumbass, calling Amina. I just can't. I mean, he called Amina ass. And, you know, like, yeah, I got a meeting later tonight. And then I'll be shooting in the morning. I'm like, Peter, you full of shit. You are like, this. you are like, 
purity shit for the way you treat your wife. This ain't even your girlfriend. This is your wife who's having your baby. Like, I'm going to need you to get a clue. And then we got Diamond Mother. She wants to talk to Cisco because she like, look, you done sat up here and lied to my daughter, had her run over here, run across the country to be with your ass and... You know, you cheated on her, so I want to talk to you. So, when they get together, basically, he's like, you know what? I know I did wrong and everything, but your daughter ain't innocent either. I didn't even know she had a baby. She basically just showed up here when she landed, like, hey, I'm here. And she like, wait a minute. People who just show up on people's doorstep is crazy. And basically, he's like, yeah, I'm talking about your daughter. Yeah. You just described your daughter. When you said people who do that are crazy, you just described your daughter because that's exactly what she did. So, anyway, he still wants to kind of work it out with her. But to me, they situation is a lost cause because they both are freaking liars. They can't be honest. and Relationships are based on honesty. And I'm like, what the hell? Anyway, then we got Chrissy and Chick. You know, this nigga been back in New York, but he found it in his senses. I ain't gonna say senses, because this nigga obviously don't got no sense. He done been back in New York, but he too busy in the studio and being with bitches at the club and shit that he can't find it time enough to go home or whatever. And so she, you know, she tracks this nigga down at the studio, and he's working with some artist. I forgot her name. Anyway, so she's checking in, like, why you ain't been home? And he like, well, I've been busy. She was like, well, you know, I've been here on the streets. You've been at the club. He was like, yeah, you know, I took home girls to the club. He talking about this artist. And she was like, what the fuck you taking out to the club for? Like, what what is your purpose you don't got no friends and i'm thinking that too like what is your purpose what kind of possibly what kind of excuse do you have for taking her to the club i mean get real anyway so after that we have this stupid you know these things they like playing back to back we got amina she's getting ready for her new baby, you know, for the new arrival. She's at the stores, still picking up stuff for the baby. And I'm like, oh, that's so sad. She doing all this shit by her fucking self. But then part of me was like, no, you brought this on yourself because you knew he was with Tara and you knew that he wasn't even coming home to you. So even if you thought that, hey, he going to try to commit to me and he ain't with Tara, he's showing you. No matter what the fuck you thought, he's showing you that he ain't right because he ain't been coming home. So anyway, she by herself picking out the last minute things for the baby. And then on the other, you know, in Barbados, you see Tara and Peter, you know, playing with their kids and everything. And I'm just thinking, like, this is fucking disgusting. Ugh, I can't even, ugh, I hate shit like that. And then we got Sin and Erica. Sin wants to confront Erica about what she found out from Rhonda about, you know, the money that basically that Erica been keeping. And all of a sudden, Erica wants to turn this around talking about she's not, she's a, you know, Sin's a sometimes girlfriend because she, you know, she always throwing shit up in her face like she ain't fucking happy. Like, first you bring up Bow Wow, now you bringing up this bitch Rhonda and you know she's a fucking liar. She stole money from me and all this shit. But I'm like, Erica, you ain't did shit to prove that you want to do right by her, so of course she going to believe Rhonda. Like, you showed her better than you could tell her. It's outside of what Rhonda said. It's what about all the shit you been doing? And then we end the episode, y'all, with Peter and Tara. Peter wants to sit up and have a romantic dinner for what? I don't know. But what I was here for is that Tara read the fuck out of him. She was like... It ain't about me loving you. It's about you not being able to love me the way I deserve to be loved. And he was like, well, what was I supposed to do? She was like, you were supposed to stop. And every time he tried to say something, she was like, you were supposed to stop. And I'm like, yeah, you tell him. And then he gonna say some dumb shit like, tell me a man who don't have a mouth of a woman that I'll show you a liar. Bitch, whatever. You using that as a cop out because you know that you are a fucked up individual. But anyway, that was the episode, y'all. Y'all, when I tell y'all I took everything in me to give y'all the rest of this, it did. 
So, till next time, y'all. Peace and love.